In this video, we're going to go over plays off the rush and how to enter the offensive zone. I'm going to start you guys off with one of the most popular methods, and that's passing it back to your defenseman. When you're in the corner, it causes your opponent to chase the wrong guy and to get the opponent's AIs out of position. Now that we have that out of the way, I want to mention that was the only clip that I had recorded over the past three weeks on zone entry. I guess when I'm too focused on the game, I'm not paying attention to recording these clips as I'm coming into the zone. So instead, I ended up recording five full games against D1 Hut players, and I just cropped out all the different rushes and zone entries that I did. Plus, it's kind of like a story to tell the segment of five games. So first of all, for all those who don't understand what off the rush means, it's usually when you're in your own zone and you get the puck from the opponent, causing all your players to go on the offense. And that play nearly was a little bit too slow for me, so I opted to go for the shot instead of the breakaway. One of the ideologies that I follow in off the rush gameplay is you should always pass it to the man that's furthest up. If you play Isha with me like my friends do, you'll hear it all the time from me. In this clip I'm going to do one of those flip passes to get a shorthanded breakaway goal. But the main idea of passing to the man furthest up is it moves the play along faster. If the opponent's forwards are behind you when you make that first pass, it'll take him much longer to help out with the back check. And by that I mean catch up to the person that you just passed it to. And you'll see that a lot in these plays. It is a little bit different in Isha when the opposing team has a player controlled defender. If that person looks like they're anticipating the pass, you probably don't want to pass it, otherwise your friend is just going to get tackled. At the same time, your friend should try to anticipate that hit, and as soon as he gets the puck, you try doing a little stick handling move to the left or to the right to escape the hit. If you're the person furthest up and you don't think you're going to escape the hit, just try to do a quick little pass that I'm about to show you guys. To keep the possession on your team and keep the play moving. Don't wait too long, however, because no one likes a pass along the blue line. So at that point, we expect that you're going to make it into the zone. Otherwise, you might cause an offside like many AIs like to do. If there's two or three of you pushing into the offensive zone and you're going at the same speed and the same distance away from the blue line, your best bet is usually not to do any stick handles either unless you're going straight to the left or straight to the right. Because those will usually keep you on side. Just don't go 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock with the right stick. Otherwise, the puck will be behind you when you enter the zone and causing an offside. Here's a fun little play along the boards. I see that he's controlling a person right next to me. He's going to stick handle into the boards and force a penalty. Many times, your best chances off the rush are when your goalie passes it out. The reason for this is usually the opponent's forwards are congested in front of the goalie. So a few quick passes out of the zone and you can force a 3 on 2 scenario. It doesn't quite happen in this case. Which is why I do highly recommend you guys pass the puck out as much as possible when it's safe to do so. Over time you'll get more experience and you'll be able to do it much more consistently. You should start by passing out behind the net where there's no chance for the opponent to score. Then pass it out into the open areas. And then finally you'll be able to pass it out through opposing players. Let's see if I can come out with a video like that in the future. Similarly to the creating breakaways video, the other thing that's important is having your players leave the zone early, and to do that, you use the directional pad pretty much in any uh, direction in a game. Then you use either the right bumper or left bumper on the PlayStation, it's L1, R1, so that your players can break out better. This play of the offside indicator on, pretty useful. The initial idea was to go straight forward. I saw my players offside, so I moved a little bit to the right before I went into the zone. Something that I love to do when entering the offensive zone is paying attention to who the person I'm playing against is controlling. If he's controlling the right defender, I go to the left. If he's controlling the left guy, I go to the right. It causes him to switch players and it might create some disorientation because now he has to do something different for the play. Maybe his AI defender might be trying to go for a play and when he switches to him, it screws up that AI defender. Then from there you might be able to double back and go back to the original guy or pass it so that it goes in that direction anyway. But usually when you're trying to enter the zone, you're just skating towards the open ice. Then when you get in, you can start making those passes or try to get into a position for a high percentage shot. But basically, the play's not going to be stopped for an offside if you're already in the zone. I love this play I just did right here. This guy was being very aggressive, so I pull back on the right stick 5 o'clock and do a between the legs deke. Sometimes what may happen is you get into a situation like this. Using Madonna got two players to my left. Don't even bother turning, just zoom straight forward so you don't lose any speed and then you can kind of curve towards the inside to use your breakaway move. You want that speed so that the opposing players are behind you, not in front of you. Same thing in this one, get some speed, get away from everyone, start moving to the left a little bit. I don't bury it, but that's okay. 
Going back to that leave zone early strategy, I think what it does is it angles your players so that they're ready to move out. They have their assignment, cover a guy or cover a zone, but they're more focused on what's coming up, and by that I mean not the opponent scoring a goal on you. Yeah, the puck was knocked out of the zone, so I curled to the left towards the open ice. I think the reason why I'm able to do such things without much problems is because I've already decided where I'm going to go as I'm picking up the puck. I don't give the opponent much time to set up defensively along the blue line, and that might be why I don't run into much 05 trappers. In this play, notice the left defenseman. He skated towards me, so I passed it to the left where there's more open ice, so I'm able to skate into the zone safely. So here's going to be a cute little one-on-one -on -one situation. Don't worry about the guy on the right, he's not going to do anything. When you're by yourself, you can absolutely do stick handles like those. The one that I just talked about in an earlier clip where you're going to 5 o'clock on your forehand because the opponent's being too aggressive. Unless the opponent pokes the puck away from you or you somehow lose possession of it, you're not going to be offside if you go in by yourself. I think sometimes it might, but for the most part it won't. Back to the 05 trappers, my primary method of entry against them is skate towards the opposite side of the player that they're controlling. And then when you make it past the blue line, you do a quick pass either to the left or to the right as your players enter the zone. God, this was such an ugly goal. I did exactly what I wanted, it just did not look as great as I wanted it to. If you're skating towards one of the sides against an 05 trapper, and the opponent manages to select the guy closest to you, start skating towards the middle and have him chase you. Stick handle towards the opposite side, so if he's on your right, you stick handle to the left, and then do a straight pass to the left or to the right in his direction. That'll cause your computers to go and pick up the puck. You can even hit the boards and then your computer will get it. It doesn't really matter. In real life, in a situation like that, if someone's doing like an 05 trap for instance, what teams would do is the dump and chase method. They would throw the puck from the neutral zone into the offensive zone, as teammates skate forward with momentum and they would be able to get the puck before the opposing team would be able to skate back and get it. Oh, just one second, here's a little sexy thing that I like to do off the rush, a little one touch deke, and you're able to do a little move to the left or to the right, and usually you keep your momentum too. But yeah, if the dump and chase does not work in this game, you might be able to pair it with the hip check tip that I gave you guys earlier. But I wouldn't worry about it, just wait until a future edition of NHL, where it will be more effective. If you happen to have the lead against someone who plays the 05 trap, you're welcome to just sit in the neutral zone and wait for the opposing team to send a player at you so that they'll have four people on the blue line. So with all these different methods in mind, the thing that you have to focus on is being unpredictable. And if you're doing something that's predictable, you better hope that you're so far away from the person or you do a move that the opponent just can't have an answer for. You want to make him believe that you're going to do one thing and you end up doing another thing. And that's what a lot of those little stick handling moves that I do in the neutral zone are for. Because sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do when I enter the offensive zone. But I try to keep my options open with those little moves. There was a play earlier, which at this point I realize I missed, where I had a clear lane open for a pass. And the opponent was controlling a player anticipating the pass, so he got in the lane... But when he did that, I was able to just put on the nitrous and go straight forward to get by him before he can get back into position. This next one's going to be a bit of a broken play, but I want to show you guys this will happen pretty frequently. So I do a hard pass to a guy that was pretty close, and he couldn't receive it, so I stick lifted to get possession of this puck for a good opportunity. I probably could have scored two if I waited a little bit longer to take that shot. Here's another interesting one right after. There's a little bit of a lag spike. But he ends up laying a big hit on me, and I lost the puck. So rather than having him get possession of the puck, I decided to fight him so that it could be a neutral zone faceoff. Start of the third period, it's 2-1, and I'm about to hammer him for three straight goals off of this opening faceoff. So you guys get to see how I enter the zone in all three of these goals, and how I ended up scoring off of them. Most of these different tips and methods that I've been telling you guys have been really aggressive. Aggressive in the way that you approach entering the zone. I find that being aggressive works when the opponent is being aggressive. Because if you can get by him, then you're pretty much home free. And that's my first thought when I break out off the rush. I try to force a breakaway. So many people that I play against will play so aggressively and they'll make one small mistake and I'll just be able to capitalize on it. But in Division 1, you won't play against those people who make those silly mistakes and give up breakaways. God, I love this little move that I'm about to do in this next play. He's going to go for a hit, and I do it between the legs deke sideways because he thinks I have nowhere to go. You're wrong. 
but his other defender was there to ruin it. So if people don't make that mistake of giving you the breakaway, what you have to look for is those high percentage shots when you enter the offensive zone. Whether it's short side or across the slot, you're pretty much skating from one side of the ice, either from the left to the right or right to the left, on your forehand of course, and you're looking for a shooting lane so that the opponent will not block the shot or even try to poke you. If you're on your offhand, I found that if you hold the vision control button, which is either left trigger or L2, you can skate inward there and take a slap shot for the same type of effect. If you can skate deep into the zone and have the opponent chase you, then you can pass back either to your defenseman or whoever's playing in the middle, like your center, so that they can take a quick high percentage shot. Something that I notice a lot of the best players in the game do is that pass that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. I don't have any more of those clips because I wasn't thinking about it when I was playing. But you can also do that in the offensive zone. If you pass the blue line and start skating in an arc towards the inside, you can do a pass to one of your players who has forward momentum. And that can get a lot of players and AIs out of position. Otherwise, the last thing that you're left with is just cycling the puck and again moving the opponent out of position so that you can have a good scoring opportunity. There's one more cool thing that you guys can do when you enter the zone that I forgot to talk about, so I'm just going to throw the clip up again. I mentioned that passing as you're about to enter the zone is bad, but passing as your teammate is about to enter the zone is good. So that's why I need you guys to see us play one more time and do plays like this more often. Because it's not an offside and not that many people do it. It will usually involve one of these diagonal passes, but it doesn't have to be so far up. So with that, I'm going to conclude the video. I hope that what I talked about and all these clips that I showed you guys helps you out. This isn't quite how I imagined doing the video initially, but hopefully it came out well enough so that you guys come away with a lot of knowledge. So I do apologize for the type of presentation here because I know I didn't comment on some of the zone entries that I did. But much like the poke check and the hip check video, I hope that the more successful zone entries you guys saw, the more you guys can know what to do when you're in a situation like that. Then you'll be able to make the best decision. With that, thanks for watching guys, and I hope that you go up a division or something because of this video. I'll see you around.